Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes present The Big Story. Look, for the last time, Janet, did you murder your mother? No, Lieutenant Morgan, I didn't. Then who did? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is that all you can say? I don't know. Oh, it beats me. I never did meet a stubborn kid like you before. Oh, well, I might as well send in the police matron. Oh, Lieutenant Morgan. Yeah? Will you ask the matron to bring in some needle and thread? Uh, needle and thread? Yeah, I've got a hole in one of my bobby socks, and it looks like the dickens. <laughs> The Big Story, another in a thrilling series based on true experiences of newspaper reporters. Tonight, to Dorothy Kilgallen of the New York Journal-American, goes the Pell-Mell Award for The Big Story. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. The cigarette in the distinguished red package, Pell Mell. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to Pell Mell? There's a reason. Pell Mell famous cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell Mells are good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pall Mall's greater length filters the smoke naturally through the much greater distance of Pall Mall's traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos, giving you a smoother, mellower, more satisfying smoke. Four notes that are alike and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pall Mall famous cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Now the strange and authentic story of the Bobby Sox Kid from Bayonne. Dorothy Kilgallen, covering the police beat for the New York Evening Journal before he became the Journal American, and before you became a big byline with a Broadway column. It's one of those sticky and sultry July evenings, just about midnight, when you finally get back to the office from Jersey. You're so tired, you see spots before your eyes, and so hot, your clothes stick damply to your skin. You make a beeline for the water cooler. And there you run into the night editor. Hey, hey, Dorothy, go easy on that ice water. Want to get a chill? I'll take that chill, Al, just as long as it's good and cold. <gasps> what a session I just had in Jersey City. Yeah, you sure look all in. Mm, I am. Two days and two nights without sleep. Waiting in a sizzling hot room for a jury to make up its mind. Al, it was awful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I bet it was. Uh, look, Dorothy. Now, I... I've just got one big ambition in life. I'm going home and stand under a cold shower for about an hour and then fall into bed. Um, Dorothy, I hate to be a killjoy, but I've got to send you out on another assignment. You mean now? Right away, to Bayonne, New Jersey. Just got a flash that a woman was murdered out there. And the cops think the woman's daughter and a boyfriend did the job. They're grilling the kids at headquarters now. Now, go out there and see what you can pick up. It's all yours. this Mrs. Graham murdered, Sergeant Gillis? With a hatchet, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, but that sounds like the work of a maniac. You mean you suspect a couple of kids? Yeah, I know. It doesn't seem possible. Especially kids like these. Where's Mrs. Graham's daughter now? She's with Lieutenant Morgan in that room over there. Mm. He's been grilling her for hours. But she won't talk. Neither will her boyfriend. Mm. Where'd you pick up the kids, Sergeant? In a beer joint near the Somerville Circle. Oh, here comes Morgan now. Any luck, Lieutenant? Oh, no. The more questions I ask her, the tighter she clams up. You know, I've had some tough crooks on the grill, but this kid beats them all. Uh, 
Oh, hello, Miss Kilgallen. Hello, Lieutenant. Got anything I can use for a story? Oh, not a thing, Miss Kilgallen. And that's the truth. Frankly, we're pretty well up against a stone wall. Now, what can you do when a cute-looking 17-year-old kid just, just sits there and swings her legs and looks at you with a sweet face and says, I don't know. She won't say anything? I've tried everything. Talk to her like a Dutch uncle, like a father, like a, like a cop, like a mug even. But it's no go. I don't know, she says. Just like that. I don't know. Lieutenant Morgan. Yeah? Mind if I go into that room and talk to Janet Graham alone? Now, what good will that do? I don't know that it'll do any good. But I just might come up with something. You know, just between us girls. How about it? Now, look, Miss Kilgallen, all the other reporters are gone home. Why don't you go, too? She won't crack. Believe me. I know all the tricks, and I've used them all. She just won't crack. Would you let me talk to her? Oh, it's too hot to argue. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. But believe me, you're wasting your time. We've had our best men working on that kid. And she just won't talk. <laughs> Hi, Janet. Who are you? My name's Dorothy Kilgallen. I'm a reporter. A reporter? Honest? Honest. I thought I'd just drop in for a chat. Oh. Well, you're not going to find anything out from me. I don't know anything. Oh, well, maybe you don't, but I do. You do? What? You look like a sight. Your hair's every which way, and your nose is shiny. Well, well, gosh, Miss Kilgallen, what can I do? I, I left my compact in Charlie's jalopy when they picked us up. Well, he wouldn't like you the way you look now. Gee, is it that bad? Here, take my compact. Oh, thanks, Miss Kilgallen. Gee, this is just super. Is it real gold? Yes. Yeah. I've got one in silver, shaped like a heart, and it's got initials on it. C.M. C.M., who's that? Charlie Mason. He gave it to me for my birthday. He's my boyfriend. We've been going steady for a year. Is he nice? Oh, he's just super, Miss Kilgallen. Tell me about him. Gee, you really want me to? Of course. Well, he's star athlete at Bayonne High, and he's a whiz at tennis. Beats me six love every time, and I'm supposed to be pretty good for a girl. Oh, here's your compact back. Oh, thanks. Feel better? Oh, yes, lots. You use the same color powder I do. <laughs> Janet, I suppose you and Charlie, you know that you're in a mess of trouble. Yeah, I, I guess we are. Why don't you tell them what they want to know? I won't. I won't tell them a thing. I hate them. Then maybe you'd tell me. You? Yes. You know, it's different when you tell everything to a woman. A woman sort of understands. Well, gee, you're nice, Miss Kilgallen, but... But what, Janet? You love Charlie, don't you? You know that? Of course. Why shouldn't you? Golly, you do understand, don't you? Yes, I think so. That's the trouble with them. The police, I mean. They don't know how it was with Charlie and me. Mother didn't either. She... She what, Janet? Nothing. All right, if you don't want to tell me anything, Janet, I guess I'll have to go. Oh, no, I... Please stay. Then what about your mother? She hated Charlie. She wouldn't even let him come into the house. Did she know you loved him? I kept telling her that. Honest, Miss Kilgallen, I kept telling her. That's why we argued. Argued about what? It was this afternoon. Mother wanted me to do some work around the house, but I skipped out to meet Charlie. Where'd you meet him, Janet? The church. Mm -hmm. He's in the choir, you know, and they were having choir practice. The door was open, and I went in. Charlie was singing a solo, and I listened. It was wonderful, Miss Kilgallen. Listening to Charlie was... Well, it was like going to heaven. I, I was just thrilled. I wanted to reach up and touch him, but I didn't. I just sat there and listened. After that, well, I, I guess I kind of walked on air. 
I met Charlie outside the church. We had a tennis date at 6 o'clock, but before that I had to go to the delicatessen and buy some cold cuts for supper. On the way to the delicatessen, I, I kind of took Charlie's hand and held it. Just holding his hand like that thrilled me, but... Oh, Charlie... Oh, you know how boys are, Miss Kilgallen. He, he was kind of bashful. Hey, Janet. Yes, Charlie? Quit holding my hand. Everybody on the street's looking at us. Don't you love me? Well, sure I do, Cookie. You know that, but... How about coming to my house for supper tonight? Oh, gee, I, I can't do that, Janet. What would your mother say? I don't care what mother says. She's not going to boss me around anymore. We'll just tell her we're in love and that we're going to get married just as soon as you can get a job singing on the radio. Well, I don't know. Don't you love me, Charlie? Sure, Cookie. I told you I did. Well, then we don't have to be afraid of Mother or anyone else. Oh, here's the delicatessen. Well, good afternoon, Janet. Hello, Mr. Schmidt. And what'll it be today? Um, I'll have a quarter of a pound of ham. Ham? Quarter of a pound of liverwurst. Liverwurst? Uh, 20 cents worth of potato salad. Potato salad? And, uh, oh, oh, Mr. Schmidt. Yeah? Uh, Mother will kill me for this, but I don't care. I want a jar of mayonnaise. Mayonnaise? Yeah, I'm just wacky about mayonnaise. And this time, I don't give a darn what my mother says. So you left the delicatessen store and went right home. Is that it, Janet? Well, no, not exactly, Miss Kilgallen. You know how hot it was today? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, Charlie and I stopped in a tavern, and we had two glasses of beer each and some pretzels. Beer was super at being so hot outside and all. After that, we went to my house. <laughs> Funny how I felt then. How did you feel? Well, it... <sighs> Gee, I... I don't know why I'm telling you all this. How did you feel, Janet? Well, it, it was so hot, and I, I was kind of dizzy and thrilled because Charlie was going with me and we were going to stand up to Mother... You know, Miss Kilgallen, how it is when you're all thrilled and excited. Oh, sure, I know. Well, what happened when you got home? Well, Mother was out. I see. What did you and Charlie do then? Oh, Charlie read a magazine, and I... I kind of did a little housework. Janet. Yes, Miss Kilgallen? You're not telling me the truth. What's the use of talking to me if you don't tell me the truth? Now, what really happened when you and Charlie came home and found that your mother was out? Don't be afraid, Janet. I'll understand. But you've got to tell me the truth. All right. All right, I will. We were both a little dizzy, I guess. You know, we, we kept saying things to each other. Then all of a sudden, I felt like dancing, so I put on a record of our song. Your song? Yes, Temptation. It's my favorite, and Charlie's, too. We... Well, we, we call it our song. Anyway, I felt like dancing, so I put the record on the Victrola. And then... Charlie. Yeah? Let's dance. Dance? Yes. Take me in your arms, Charlie. But what if your mother comes in and sees us? I don't care. Do you? No. No, I guess not. Charlie. Charlie, let's stop dancing now. Let's sit down. Sit down? Yes. Kiss me, Charlie. Please. back in just a moment with tonight's big story, but first a word from Cy Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, have you noticed how many of your friends have changed to Pell-Mell? Four notes that are alike and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell-Mell famous cigarettes. 
Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pall Mall's are good, 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 and good. Good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. For Pall Mall's greater length filters the smoke naturally through the much greater distance of Pall Mall's traditionally fine, mellow tobaccos, giving you a smoother, mellower, more satisfying smoke. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell Mell famous cigarettes, outstanding. And they are mild. Now we return you to our narrator, Barry Kroger, and tonight's big story. Bobby Zuck's kid from Bayonne keeps talking there in that sweltering, dingy police room. The words spill from her faster and faster. You can see that she wants to talk now. She's glad to get it off her chest. It's been simmering and boiling inside. Finally, she stops to catch her breath. And you ask her... Now, when your mother walked into the parlor and found you and Charlie there, what did she say, Janet? Mother just stood there, Miss Kilgallen. She stood there looking as though she'd like to kill the both of us. And the Victrola kept on playing Temptation. I... I don't remember who spoke first. I think it was Charlie. Miss Graham, I... Turn off the Victrola, Janice. Well, mother... Mother, we were just... I said turn off the Victrola. Yes, Mother. Now, Janice, go into the kitchen. I want to talk to you alone. But, Mrs. Graham, she didn't do anything. I'll thank you to keep still. You just sit right here. I'll have something to say to you later. Janet, you march right into the kitchen. And what happened after you got into the kitchen, Janet? Janet, what happened? Well, Miss Kilgallen, Mother didn't say anything for a long time. She just started to get the dishes out for supper. I was nervous and scared... Well, it was the heat, too. It was so hot. It, it did funny things to me. I thought maybe if I did something, something with my hands, instead of just standing there waiting for Mother to say something, it'd be better. I, I could think better. And then I saw the hatchet on the windowsill. What was the hatchet doing there? I brought it up from the cellar. Why did you bring it up? Because Mother had asked me to nail down some loose linoleum on the kitchen floor. So I got some tacks and started to hammer it down. And then, then Mother started to talk. I don't know. I just don't know. What did I ever do to deserve a daughter like you? A common, cheap little flirt. Mother, don't say things like that. All Charlie did was kiss me. I don't want to hear another word from you, Janet Graham. Not another single solitary word. When your father comes home, I'll see that he takes the strap to you, you little good-for-nothing. Mother, please, I... Seventeen years old, a baby, and sitting on the couch hugging and kissing a nasty boy like Charlie Mason. I'm no baby, do you hear, Mother? I'm seventeen, I'm grown up, and I love Charlie Mason. Ha! Ah! You. What do you know about love? You're just boy crazy, that's all. Boy crazy. Mother, don't. Don't say things like that. Boy crazy, boy crazy, boy crazy. Please, Mother, don't. I forbid you to ever see him again. I positively forbid you to see him again. Do you hear me, Janet? You're not to see him again. You can't stop me. You can't stop me. I'll see Charlie all I please. I love him. I love him. I love him. Don't you dare talk back to me. Don't you dare. Mother, please, let's not quarrel anymore. It's so hot, and I've got such a terrible headache, and I, I'm so mixed up. I warn you, Janet. If I ever catch that awful boy around here again, I'll have your father horse with him. Mother, don't say things like that. Please, stop. I don't like him, and I never did. He's no good, and he'll never be any good. Mother, stop! Don't you yell at me, you young good for nothing. Stop, stop, stop! How dare you talk back to your own mother like that? How dare you? Janet. I asked you to stop. I asked you to stop nagging. Janet, I... Janet, put down that hatchet. Down that. Charlie! You're not going to stand between Charlie and me. You're not going to. Is she, Charlie? Janet, don't. Charlie, no! Keep away from me! Please! No, Janet! No! You listen in horror as Janet Graham tells you what happened then. You listen 
And there's an all-gone feeling in the pit of your stomach as you watch this sweet-faced kid in the bobby socks dangling her tanned legs under the bench and calmly telling you... I hit Mother then, Miss Kilgallen. She screamed and fell down. That's all. I... I see. What did you do then, Janet? Well, then we thought we'd better talk things over. You and Charlie? Yes. Charlie's jalopy was outside, and we decided we'd better drive to Canada because they'd be looking for us pretty soon. We didn't have much money, so we started to make up sandwiches in the kitchen for our trip. And then all of a sudden, the doorbell rang. Janet. Janet, someone's at the front door. You keep making up those chicken and ham sandwiches here in the kitchen, Charlie. I'll see who it is. All right. Gee, I, I hope it isn't the police or someone. Lord, Janet. Janet's anything wrong? Wrong? We know Mrs. Wallace. What makes you think so? Well, I was sitting on my front porch next door, and I thought I heard your mother scream. Oh, oh, that. Well, Mother just cut her finger, that's all, Mrs. Wallace. Oh, for a moment I thought that... Nothing serious, is it, Janet? Oh, no, Mrs. Wallace. Just a nick. Nothing to worry about. Oh, thank heaven for that. That scream certainly gave me a fright. Well, I'll be getting back, Janet. Well, uh, thanks for looking in, Mrs. Wallace. Who... Who was it, Janet? Nobody. Just a neighbor. Oh, Charlie. Yeah. What... What's the matter? You forgot something. Forgot something? Yes, on those chicken sandwiches you're making. The mayonnaise. You know I just love mayonnaise. <laughs> Is that all, Janet? Well, Miss Kilgallen, I guess so. Except that we started out for Canada. And you got as far as the Somerville Circle, hmm? Yes. It was awful hot driving this evening. And, well, we stopped at a tavern for a couple of glasses of beer, and by that time, Charlie was pretty worried. Gosh, Janet. We're in an awful jam now. I don't care. I don't care about anything. I love you, Charlie. We, we'll never be able to make Canada. Why, all I've got is a dollar and 40 cents. You're awful cute, Charlie. Awful cute. Janet, maybe we ought to give ourselves up. I love your hair, Charlie. It, it's so thick and nice. I always feel like running my fingers through it. Janet, we got to decide what to do. Charlie? Yeah? Play number seven on the jukebox. But look, Cookie, Play we... number seven. It's our song, Charlie. Temptation. Okay. <laughs> oh, Charlie. Our song. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't it just super? Yeah. Listen, Janet. About your mother, about what we did. Oh, don't talk about that now. Now, let's talk about anything now. Let's just sit here and listen and dream. Janet. Janet, the cop. He just came in. He's seen us, Janet. He's coming over to our boat. Is uh, that your tan coop outside, son? Uh, yes, sir. Your name Charlie Mason? Yes, sir. And your Janet Graham? Yes, sir. Okay, you kids. You better come along with me. All right, officer. We'll go with you, only. Yeah? Do you mind if we wait till the music's over? And, uh, that's the whole story, Janet. Yes, Miss Gilgallan. That's all there is. Now you know everything. It's funny, I, I didn't mind telling you. I knew you'd understand. You do, don't you? Yes, I understand, Janet. But now, will you tell the others what you told me? I don't want to. I know. But I think you'd better. All right, Miss Kilgallen. If you say so, I'll tell them. Well... I have to go now. You 
can't stay with me any longer? No, no, I, I can't. Oh. Well, goodbye, Miss Kilgallen. Goodbye, Janet. <laughs> A full house beats two pair any day. <laughs> oh, hello, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, how'd you make out? Didn't get anything out of the kid, I'll bet. Yes, I did. Uh, you did? Hey, that really puts me in my place. All of us trying and not getting a glimmer. What's the lead? She told me everything. Everything? Are you serious? You mean you got that kid to she crack? She told me everything. Well, who did it? She or the boy? Did she kill yes, the old lady? Yes, she did it, but it didn't have to happen. It shouldn't have happened if her mother had only shown a little more understanding. Just a little more sympathy and love. Oh, what's the use? What difference does it make now? Yeah, I know, I know. Now, now take it easy, Miss Kilgallen. You're pretty well used up. You did a big job in there, and it kind of gets you down. Huh? I guess so. Look at the exclusive you got. It's, it's a big story, if there ever was one. And all due to you. Yes. It's a big story, Lieutenant. But do you want to know something? What? I wish I'd never heard of it. I wish I never had to write it. I wish it had never happened. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll read you a telegram from Dorothy Kilgallen with the final outcome of tonight's big story. <laughs> Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. Good to look at. Good to feel. Good to taste. And good to smoke. Yes, Pell Mells are good, 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 and good. Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. Good to look at, good to feel, good to taste, and good to smoke. Four notes that are alike, and one that is outstanding. And of America's leading cigarettes, one is outstanding. Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. Outstanding. And they are mild. Now we read you that telegram from Dorothy Kilgallen of the New York Journal American. Boy and girl in tonight's big story were found guilty of murder but received relatively light sentences on account of their youth. Boy was later paroled from state prison on condition that he joined some branch of armed forces. Girl was paroled from reformatory after serving six and a half years. Many thanks for tonight's Pell-Mell Award. Thank you, Miss Kilgallen. The makers of Pell-Mell Famous Cigarettes are proud to have named you the winner of the Pell-Mell $500 Award for notable service in the field of journalism. Listen again next week, same time, same station, when Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes will present another big story. A big story from the pages of the Buffalo Evening News. Byline, Eddie DeCastro. A big story that began when a woman was told that her husband had been murdered and left. <laughs> The Big Story is produced by Bernard J. Proctor and directed by Harry Ingram with music by Vladimir Selinsky. Tonight's program was written by Max Ehrlich. Your narrator was Barry Kroger and Janet Fox play the part of Dorothy Kilgallen. All names in tonight's story except that of Miss Kilgallen were fictitious, but the dramatization was based on a true and authentic case. This is Ernest Chappell speaking for the makers of Pell Mell Famous Cigarettes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.